What's good everyone? About to do a little bit of afternoon street photography, Tucson, Arizona. I'm off to the Mercado St. Augustine. It is a relatively new development compared to the outlying areas. What I really like about the architecture is that it is reminiscent of traditional adobe and traditional architecture of Tucson but a lot of the buildings are very minimalistic. There's something a little bit maybe regal for lack of a better word, even though there's a part of the neighborhood that's really vacant. There's not a lot of people around. It's really high end, you know, it's an expensive place to live, but it is really pretty to photograph. And what we're using today is the Fuji XF10. This is my go-to street photography camera. It's a crop sensor camera. It's a 24 millimeter equivalent, I believe. And it's a really powerful machine for working in the streets. I do use it in low light situations, but it doesn't perform as well as say my iPhone 11. I've never done long exposures on this particular camera. So if you have, and you've had success or with a camera like it, let me know. What I really like Fuji is fresh out the camera, the JPEGs look really rich. They're pretty much ready to go in my opinion and it's been a really fun journey using this camera. When I bought it, it was really inexpensive buy-in. I think I bought it online for less than $450 after shipping. A lot of the work that I've grabbed with this particular camera has been in galleries all across the world from Glasgow to Rome. If you're looking for something compact, but as a camera outside of your phone, I'd highly recommend this unit. Also, it has these interesting filters on it. I typically use toy camera because it kind of looks like my Holga. So if you've ever played with a Holga film camera, which is 120 film, the results I feel are pretty similar to this. My guess is that's the, the look they were going for. So we're gonna hit the streets, get some images, have some fun. Typically there's not a lot of foot traffic. It's almost five o'clock and it's pretty much uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, but we'll do the best with some shapes and colors and you're gonna see first person of me walking around a quaint little neighborhood in Tucson. And there's a lot of cool outlying areas too, so we may just kind of venture a little bit, but we'll take it as we go. This isn't the perfect rig, but it'll get the job done. I'm trying to stabilize a little bit for you. So here we are, Fuji XF10, Mercado St. Augustine, Tucson, Arizona. I don't know, it's about five. And funny enough, the first POV video I've ever did with an action cam I did in this neighborhood. So let's see. Definitely grabbed a bunch of shots of this particular doorway in the past. With my iPhone at night, I'll pop that photo on the screen. And we're gonna get some some long shadows, some fun. Right out the camera, Fujifilm. We're gonna get some really, really pretty JPEGs, but I'll play with them a little bit in post and, and see what works best. I'm switching back to the toy camera. I will say that this filter is a little difficult to get the camera to focus. I think that's the only liability of using this look. But by and large, it's a lot of fun. 
and if you're you're not having fun when you're on either side of the lens you're doing something wrong and i can definitely say that i get stressed out by certain photos not performing well and then all the trappings of modern day art sharing but when push comes to shove i'm really grateful that some people long for the journey and i get to have some fun with my camera on the good days i get a book out of it make some sales get into some galleries and that's been my journey so far Now, typically, I'm not gonna have this much, this many, typically you won't have this many clouds in the sky in Tucson, but it is monsoon season. So we're gonna get an influx of long shadows and the shadows will, di will disappear for obvious reasons as the sun disappears a little bit. But I tend to come here in the morning too, and the light will be a little different, but you'll get long shadows in different areas. As I suspected of not getting a lot of foot traffic, it's kind of a quiet neighborhood. Unless we go to the opposite end of the neighborhood and kind of go into the bars and stuff. But they'd probably frown upon me doing POV video on there, would be my guess. Okay. And, oh. I've taken tons of photos of this car, but it's worth revisiting because she is a beauty. I'm not a car person, but I definitely take a bunch of photos of cars because I love the design. All right, so this is a Plymouth Barracuda. Okay. I wouldn't have known that unless I walked up on it and just took this shot, but... always appreciated this car in this particular neighborhood because it's got a lot of the car itself has a lot of fluid lines and it contrasts the architecture contrasts the architecture but look at these little these little hints look at that little Let's see if I can get that Get it. Go back for one. Let's see if I can get it that way. There's also a bunch of murals in this little development. How you doing? Not too shabby. I'm just playing with shapes and colors. That's one of the murals that I've noticed. There's a, a building size mural on the other end of this neighborhood that we'll, we'll go see as well. I've done a video about night photography in this particular neighborhood. And I really think it brings a lot of value, whether you're a beginner or not. It's a really fun technique that I just stumbled upon midst of COVID-19. Freelancing a lot, so I had a press pass. And also I live in Arizona and they were not very strict about any COVID-19 practices, especially if you're outside, even at the height of the pandemic. So with my press pass and the laws of my current, laws of the state that I currently live in, 
didn't really have any trouble moving around. I was extra cautious at first and then, you know, after a while, things got to settle down and I just got back to the business of living. But I did a lot of shooting in this neighborhood, a lot of photography in this neighborhood at that time because it was just, it was quiet but pretty. It was a good way to stay active. And then if I got something relevant, I'd pitch it out to my longtime friend and editor. That was also when I was covering the George Floyd protests. And I got some decent images there. Wrote a little bit about it, but nothing too crazy. Nothing award-winning. I was more focusing on creating a more artistic life for myself. I spent many, many years as a journalist here in Tucson and Southern Arizona. Did a little bit of work back east, New Jersey and New York area. And once I left that industry, I wanted to really leave it. When I was freelancing in Cochise County, it was, uh, I got to do the projects I actually wanted to do, which was really exciting. Unfortunately, my editor's budget kind of clammed up and, you know, I kind of got pushed to the side. I could always revisit the project that I was working on if I wanted to do it for free, but and I've actually been thinking about kicking it back up. We did a project together called The Faces of Cochise County. And I would do street portrait work and interviews with just regular folks all around Cochise County, which is a little bit southeast of Pima County, which is where Tucson is situated. Oh, wow. So yeah, this is the reason why I come into a neighborhood like this. In the mornings and at night, typically shooting with iPhone but especially at night because iPhone 11 you have the long exposure you got three second exposure which you can usually do handheld and you can get some really really fabulous work with the mobile phone that is an integral part of almost everyone's life